Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gary McGinnis here again, PFPX Beta Tester. Today I want to talk a little bit about Reed Dispatch. The flight today was uh, ABEX 2008 from Guatemala to Los Angeles. The flight was operated by November 219 Charlie Yankee, that's 767-300. A little background here for a moment. As I said before in my previous video, I like to simulate blocks of flights with the correct dates. When I operated this flight a couple uh, about a month ago, I was in my ABEX air block. When I did the uh, paperwork overview, I was in my Ryan International block. So this flight actually operated on the 10th of January 2013 compared to the October 31st, 2012 with the Ryan flights. This flight is for uh, Aeromexico Cargo out of Los Angeles. And normally, when this flight is operated with a 767-200, out of Guatemala, there is a tech stop in Huatuco. However, since the 767-300 has been on the flight, the payloads have been acceptable to eliminate the tech stop in Huatuco. Guatemala, for those who are not familiar, is a tough little airport. It has a short runway, high elevation, and there's mountains to the north. And then there's a really unique fact about this airport. Uh, Taking off with even up to a 15-knot tailwind uh, provides better payload uplift than taking off into the wind on runway 05 most of the time. And today, this, case, this was the case for this flight. The 767 is certified for up to 15 knots of tailwind on departure, and as you can see, we were 13 knots today. With that high temperature and the tail, uh, with that high temperature and the elevation, our true airspeed uh, for liftoff was really high. And you tie that into the tailwind, we actually had a brakes limit code today, which means uh, if we have to abort at V1, uh, our brakes would allow us to do that. And that gave us 34,500 pounds. A little bit about redispatch here. In this case, in the U.S. Uh, carrier case, it's OPSPEC B44. And like I said, the main, pro the main theory behind redispatch is to reduce the in route uh, reserves. Another theory for uh, uh, non 121 supplemental carrier, so in this case a 121 flag flight, for example, is possibility of elimination of an alternate airport. Uh, for uh, flights uh, over six hours, if you release them direct, you have to carry an a destination alternate. However, if you break up the flight into a, from your departure to an initial destination, and then from initial destination onto your ultimate destination, if that flight, if both those flight times are under six hours, you do not need either alternate on either end. That's the, that's the secondary theory behind redispatch, but like I said, the main theory is uh, in route reserve reduction. So taking a look up here at PFPX, this is how PFPX looks for the, um, for the dispatcher. What you want to do is when you go ahead and uh, get ready to do your redispatch flight, you click back into the flight uh, you've already released, and you go into the in-flight tab and click Setup. It'll populate open with uh, a couple boxes blank. The aircraft position, the flight level, uh, destination. Destination is always going to be populated. Our zero fuel weight, that is not the correct zero fuel weight. You guys got to watch that when you are doing redispatch flights. The zero fuel weight will populate the empty weight. To get your zero fuel weight, you take your closeout weight that you receive from the airplane and put it in. So in this case, our closeout weight close up zero fuel weight today when we had uh, pushback was 20,600 uh, pounds and our planned fuel over our redispatch fix per the flight plan was 15,300 and while we're here the nav log on PFPX when you do a redispatch flight this is the default nav log again it'll isolate the redispatch fix as shown here so with all that information implied you go ahead and push apply. I've already done that, so I'm going to actually click close. And taking a look here, PFPX uh, auto populates all this data for use. So we have our flight information from our aircraft position to Los Angeles, our aircraft with our profile, our fuel, which our planned fuel over Papa Papa Echo is 15,300. Our route, which is uh, from Papa Papa Echo to Los Angeles via the J93 to Julian and the oldie one arrival. Our alternate plan, which is destination of Long Beach. Going to the advanced tab now. 
I just put a little mark in here for uh, this is our re-release because because once you uh, generate and release a redispatch flight, you'll have you'll have your initial flight plan and then you'll have your re-release flight plan. So you know it'll automatically say it, and you'll see a picture on the forum post about this as well, but uh, showing what I'm talking about. But it just is another little note I have. Click generate. PFPX will generate an OFP based on your position from Papa Papa Echo. And as you can see here, the in re reduction, the 10% required reserves is only six minutes. Had we really gone and done this flight from Guatemala to Los Angeles direct, that 10% could have been well into an hour and 20 hour and 30 minutes. And that's an hour and 20 or 30 minutes of fuel that we have to carry that could have been converted to payload. As I said, for those who are a little confused about the uh, redispatch theories, uh, the forum post that's linked below on the top cat also has a general description of uh, re -re redispatch, and I've included that as well. So if you're still a little confused, I, I might recommend stopping that video right now, clicking on the forum post, reading up on the overview of redispatch, and then uh, continuing on with this video. But for those of you who are not confused, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the reduction of the 10%, as I said, had we done this flight direct, it could have been an hour and just, well, for, for discussion's sake, the 10%, had we did it direct, was an hour and 36 minutes, and the 10% with the redispatch was six minutes. That's an hour and 30 minutes of fuel that we do not need to carry that can be converted to payload, which in this case, we were able to do that and get a nice planned payload of 89,400 pounds. Our actual payload once we got to the airplane, pushback was 89,000 pounds, but it still wouldn't have been able to be done had we done a direct flight. So with this all said and done, the flight plan released, the pilot will get in contact, uh, excuse me, the flight controller or the dispatcher will get in contact with the pilot. Uh, usually it can be done via ACARS, SATCOM, or uh, high frequency radio via a foam patch. In our company's case, we do not have ACARS on our aircraft. We have 1767-300 that has SATCOM, and the rest of them require a uh, foam patch with uh, New York or Stockholm uh, radio. And those are air ring companies. Those are uh, commercial telephone operators. And what they'll do is the crew, after departure, will con get established with uh, New York or Stockholm. Say, hey, ABEX 2208 is monitoring. And they'll say, okay, ABEX 2208, we'll do a foam patch when we hear from your company. And then I'll go ahead and call up and say, hello, Stockholm, or hello, New York. This is uh, ABEX Air Flight Control trying to get in contact with ABEX 2208. They'll take a couple minutes and uh, get in contact with the cut flight, and then they'll come back and say, ABEX operations, uh, we have ABEX 2208 on the, on the line, confirm ready for foam patch. Once I say, yes, I'm ready for foam patch, they'll foam patch the crew via their high-frequency radio through a converter onto the telephone line so I can hear them over the telephone line, at which time we'll go ahead and exchange pleasantries, and I'll say, ABEX 2208, you're within two hours of redispatch fix. I have your redispatch message report ready to copy. They'll say, okay, we are ready to copy, and then the flight crew, after I read this information, we can follow along here. We'll write down this information. So in this case, I'm reading it off to the flight crew, and I'll say, ABEX 2208, you're released from Papa Papa Echo VOR to KLAX. Time en route from Papa Papa Echo to KLAX is one hour, four minutes. Burn 7,300 pounds. Redispatch fuel, taking into account all our legal reserves, our new 10%, which was six minutes, our alternate, which is still Long Beach, and our far reserve of 30 minutes. Uh, 1,500 feet above the ground. That gives us our required fuel over Papa Papa Echo of 13,300 pounds. Flight level 360 and our alternate airport again is Long Beach. For the weather, you don't really usually will uh, read out the actual weather. You'll just give it in terms of VFR, IFR, marginal VFR, low VFR, etc., etc. In this case, I gave the crew Long Beach, or excuse me, Los Angeles is VFR, Long Beach is VFR. They'll take a moment, pull up their uh, planned fuel over Papa Papa Echo, compare it with the required fuel. In this case, the planned fuel was 17,000 pounds. Compare it with the uh, required redispatch fuel. If, it's, uh, if the value is acceptable to them and it's obviously gr uh, planned fuel is at or greater than the redispatch fuel, they'll go ahead and say 
Estimated fuel on board over Papa Papa Echo, 17,000 pounds. Romeo Delta Alpha 0301. Romeo Delta Alpha stands for Redispatch Acceptable. When they say Redispatch Acceptable, I'll go ahead and give them my uh, initials. This is how we do it at uh, my company. Other companies might be different. My company, when we do dispatch, redispatch flights, we'll give our initials. I'll go back and say, Romeo Delta Alpha confirmed, Golf Alpha Mike. And that's a redispatch message. And as the crew approaches uh, Papa Papa Echo, since this is two hours or four redispatch fix, this is in theory occurring. Once the crew arrives over Papa Papa Echo, if the fuel is at or above 13,300, they can legally continue on to Los Angeles. Now, if the fuel, for whatever reason, is not above this requirement, or if we do a flight plan and it's showing that the numbers aren't going to match, we can try to tweak it. But if they've already accepted the redispatch uh, message and in, in turn gets worse than forecast headwind over the next hour and a half, two hours, and they arrive with low, less than 13,300 pounds, legally they, they have to divert. And our, today our, uh, our initial destination was Yuma, Arizona. I personally... In my experience with redispatch flight, have had one flight have to divert because of uh, incorrect redispatch procedures, and the other flight almost had to divert because the crew did not put uh, winds aloft into the FMC. And I can only speak for the 767 in this case, but the 767 and I'm assuming other Boeing aircraft will take a current picture of the winds aloft at its current position and then draw a linear line down to zero, 200 miles out. So, as you can see, we're 200 nautical mi uh, two hours before our redispatch fix, so that in theory could be 800 to 1,000 nautical miles away. So our redispatch fix, uh, when they pull up on the route data page to get their estimated field, is based on zero winds. And that could obviously be a big difference. And in my example, not to go into too great a detail, when they did that exact thing and pulled up the route data, they saw our require the planned fuel over that fix was a lot less than the redispatch fuel. So what they did was, not knowing that they should put winds aloft in, they slowed down, and obviously once they reached the redispatch point, they were legally fine, and then they called back and said, hey, well, they called back about half hour before the redispatch fix, because this two-hour uh, fix, it, will, it cannot be, you cannot do a redispatch message earlier than two hours, but you can do from two hours on up to the crossing of that fix. So they called back and said, hey, our new estimated fuel is fine, Romeo Delta Alpha. That could have all been alleviated had they entered the winds aloft data into the FMC. So I recommend all flight simmers out there who are going to do this, insert winds aloft data when you're doing redispatch flight plans at least. That gives you valid FMC predictions and it gives you better fuel calculations because the flight plan might be based off a of tailwind and the FMC is predicting a, a zero wind. The other f factor was the redispatch fuel somehow got screwed up because two dispatchers were working on the flight plan, um, and when they went and sent the redispatch message, they actually included a, a reroute that actually had not been administered, and the redispatch had, had been screwed up, so the aircraft diverted into uh, its initial alternate. They got down on the ground, squared the paperwork away, and continued on. As I said before, I, I'm going to link uh, some more information about redispatch on the forum post. There's going to be a link below to this video. And as I said, for those of you who are still unsure, after watching this video, reading the overview theory behind redispatch, and any other possible personal reading you might have done, uh, go ahead and post a, a question below. And I will, one of us will try to answer the question. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as you did the first video. Like I said, I, I, I decided to do this video after many requests and the positive feedback the first video received. And I know I know there's still some questions of PFPX's release. We are we are the beta team and uh, Christian and all of them are are really working hard to get um, the final touches together. We really appreciate the patience. I know some of you might have been frustrated. Uh, frustrated. Uh, one of the biggest hurdles was the air rack data. Now that that's been uh, solved, we can have more information. We can post more information. But at the time, and a lot of people didn't realize this, at the time, we had no new information to post. And there was basically a gag order in place. Now that that has, all has been done, we can report, give better status reports, have more tangible information than saying, oh, we... 13, no new information. Week 14, no new information. So as I said, thank you for your patience. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.